If you've seen any of my videos, then you know that I like to include a lot of images and illustrations just like this one. I love them. I think they are immensely useful in helping us to picture the evolution of life and Earth through time. The origin of our planet. It's late heavy bombardment by asteroids. The origin of life. The origin of animals. The Cambrian explosion. The Paleozoic. The Mesozoic. The rise of large reptiles. The origin of dinosaurs the first feathered dinosaurs and ancestors of birds, mass extinctions and their aftermath and recovery. The Cenozoic, ice ages, the origin of man and the rise of civilization. It is true what they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. But where do these images come from? Scientists often work with professional artists and often amateur ones to produce images just like these. Think of them like artwork. The art will go on display in museum exhibits or journal articles or books that help to convey the science to a wider audience. Like all portraits and sketches, this artwork is bound to include some, let's say, artistic liberties. That said, it's important to recognize that these images aren't entirely works of fiction. The images are grounded in science and fact. But how do we know that these pliosaurs and plesiosaurs lived in the ocean? Or that these dinosaurs lived in a humid forest? Or that these pterosaurs flew between islands over a shallow sea? It's helpful to think about these images having two parts. They show us ancient organisms, plants, and animals that lived long ago. And they illustrate the environments in which those organisms lived. Scientists consider both. We call this work paleoenvironmental Reconstruction. Paleoenvironmental reconstruction is the scientific act of developing a model of a sedimentary environment that existed in ancient prehistoric times. Sedimentary environments encompass both the depositional environment, where sedimentary rocks are laid down as layers called strata as well as the preservational environments where ancient organisms were fossilized. If the organisms lived in the same environment and were not transported there between their death and fossilization, then you can also think about a sedimentary environment as a sort of habitat where the organisms lived. But don't just focus on the organisms here. The goal of paleoenvironmental reconstruction is more broadly to understand the conditions that existed in the sedimentary environments where the fossils were preserved and where the rocks were deposited. So, how does one go about doing paleoenvironmental reconstruction? For a geologist, the first step in paleoenvironmental reconstruction is describing the facies of the rock. The facies 
is all of the characteristic of a rock related to its sedimentary environment. It consists of its fossils, lithology, minerals, and chemistry. It starts in the field, where geologists go to look at sedimentary rocks like this one. If there are fossils preserved in the sedimentary rocks, then the scientists may study the fossils to learn about the organisms which were present in the sedimentary environment. Scientists can also look for trace fossils, signs of organisms' behavior like their tracks, trails, and footprints. Even if there are no body fossils, trace fossils can tell scientists that organisms were present in the sedimentary environment. Going one step further, it's safe to say that rocks can't all have the same body and trace fossils. It would be very unusual to find T. rex fossils at the bottom of the ocean. And you absolutely couldn't find fish and rocks that were deposited on land. So the fossils themselves can help you to narrow down where the sedimentary environment might have been located. Of course, scientists must also study the rocks themselves to learn about the depositional environment where the sediment was deposited and the strata were laid down. Scientists look at the lithology of the rock, its physical characteristics. The lithology of a rock includes the size, angularity, and sorting of its grains, as well as its sedimentary structures. All of these characteristics can help a scientist figure out the conditions that existed at the site of deposition and sedimentation. If the rocks are sandstone, then you know that the environment consisted of sand. Sedimentary structures can provide evidence that the sediment was moving prior to becoming solid through lithification. These structures include wave ripples, cross bedding, desiccation cracks, and raindrop impressions. Finally, once they are done in the field, scientists can take rock samples back to the laboratory, where they will further prepare and study the rocks using a variety of laboratory methods. For example, they may prepare petrographic thin sections by gluing the rocks to pieces of glass and cutting, grinding, and polishing them down until they are so thin that light can pass through the rock. They can then study the thin section with a petrographic microscope and examine all the minerals that are present in the rock. In addition, they may put samples from the rocks in sophisticated instruments, like this mass spectrometer. A mass spectrometer can be used to study the chemical composition of a rock. This geochemical analysis may reveal the presence of molecules and compounds, such as biomarkers, which may shed more light on the organisms and conditions that existed in the sedimentary environment. Altogether, this work helps the scientist to ascertain the facies of the rock. Again, the facies of a rock is all of its characteristics related to its sedimentary environment. It encompasses both its physical characteristics, which can be observed, like its fossils and lithology, as well as its mineralogical and chemical characteristics, which can only be determined through more extensive analysis. Armed with knowledge on the facies of a rock, scientists can proceed on to reconstructing its paleo environment. This means 
They can describe what organisms and sediment were present there, what conditions existed in the sedimentary environment, what forces affected the sedimentation and deposition of sediment, and what processes helped to shape the mineralogical and chemical composition of the rock itself. Like many things in science, paleoenvironmental reconstruction does not come quickly or easily. It can take years for a scientist to learn everything they need to know for the job, how to recognize the facies of a rock, and then how to interpret it. They need to learn not just about the environments where organisms live now, but also where different types of organisms lived in the geologic past. And they must also learn about the wide array of conditions that may affect the lithology of a rock. It takes a lot of time to learn all of the facies and their sedimentary environments. It's a skill like any other. But in the end, Paleo-environmental reconstruction opens up endless possibilities. With it, there is no place and no time that you can't visit as long as you remember to bring your imagination.